our bulb order this year is going to be a little bit different. We don't really need to order anything for the existing flower beds. Those we've inherited some tulips and some, some hyacinths and some bulbs that were already here from the previous owner when we took over the house in 2018. But the issue is we have the new flower bed now. We also have the flower bed over next to the raised beds where our dahlias are growing now. So these guys were really empty this year. Um, in the back we have the hydrangeas. So we typically don't put any bulbs around those, but we had our main flower bed, the, the original one, that was just bursting with tulips and a lot of color, some crocus and things like that. Then our other flower beds looked really empty this year. And that's because we just made those flower beds the end of the winter, the beginning of the spring for this year. Cool, fine, no problem. But now's our chance to get some bulbs, make the order, get them in September, October, November, kind of pushing it before the, the heavy frost starts coming here in Denmark. That way, these guys won't really be left out. So we have sort of two issues. We have to order some new things because they're missing. Um, and then we also have to be sure that we're matching the colors that we've had in the past. We inherited a lot of yellow tulips. That's sort of what the previous owners had. They're really nice, we leave them. Um, we brought in some more pinks, some more reds, some burgundy, some darker colors. We've also found over the years that these darker, um, almost like really deep crimson, they kind of just disappear because everything else around it is dirt. <laughs> and so then they, they easily sort of disappear. So we're looking for bright, I think oranges and yellows, maybe some apricots this year, something that from in here we can look out and it'll really catch our eye right away. Here in Denmark, the tulips are perennial. We don't have to dig up the bulbs every year. And I think it's for several reasons. Number one, the ground stays pretty well draining, which means that the bulb isn't just sort of sitting in that wet soil and rotting away. Um, we do deadhead, so when the, the flower is starting to fall off and fade and things, we do clip it, but we leave the stem. That way all of that energy can feed back into the reserves that are in the bulb, and so it will come back even better and stronger for the next year. So since we've decided to share our garden this year on YouTube, since we started around in June, um, thank you for being here. Because of that, I've decided to force you to join me on my uh, bulb order. Lars is at work, my son is at school. Um, I'm at work, but I work from home. So I've decided that I'm not doing this alone. So hopefully by the end of this session, we will have a nice order. I can put in my credit card details and uh, get some bulbs ready. And then of course we'll show you how, we, um, how we're going to plant them, where we're going to plant them, and um, hopefully we'll have some great stuff to show you in the spring when they start coming up. So let's get started. We're ordering everything off of a website called blomstaveden.dk. Uh, it means flowerworld.dk. So it's a Danish website. It's really nice. It's not one of these huge conglomerates, so we're not feeding money into, uh, dare I say, I won't name names. We're not feeding money into just some sort of a huge corporation. It's, it's a little local business. They're really nice. They've always been very kind to us. We're not sponsored, um, but we do enjoy shopping from them. So that's where we're ordering everything from. So I don't think that they ship overseas, but if you're here in Denmark, blomstaveden.dk is really, really nice. The first one that I'm looking at for this year is called an Avignon. It's beautiful. It has these orange, these crimson, sort of like a mango color. I think it will look super duper nice with some of the tulips that we already have. I also think it'll make a nice pop of color. We need to plant it here in September, October, November. It's going to bloom already in May, June, which is really nice. It'll get around 50 to 60 centimeters high. That's about what we're looking for. And then again, blooming in May, June. I know May sounds kind of late, but for here in Denmark, it'll be one of the first flowers that we have. Um, our growing season, our seasons in general, are just really, really short. We have super long days. Starting around May, June, midsummer, that's when the sun is up. Wow, from three in the morning until almost midnight, but it also means winter gets really, really dark. Anyway, so we'll definitely be hoping for something come May. That'll be really nice. Another one that I'm really interested in this year is called the Apricot Beauty. Look at this guy. Wow. Um, this sort of a peachy color. 
I think it's going to be really nice. The description says that it's a delicate, fragrant beauty and it adds a soft, warm color to your garden. Mm, I don't know about soft and warm. Soft, yeah, warm, maybe not. But I think this nice pink will complement some of the things that we already have in the garden. It also loves the full sun, which is super great for that middle flower bed. Strong stem and long flowering period. So this one blooms already in April. So April, May, and June, we're gonna get flowers from these. So that's really great. It's also, speaking of the strong stem, it says it can withstand wind and rain. And if you haven't heard me complaining before, <laughs> complaining, mentioning before, about all of the wind and the rain that we get here in Denmark, I think it's gonna be a big help. So definitely this one. Another one that I'm looking at is called Clusiana Charm. Hmm. Now, these are a little bit different. These are botanical tulips. So what that basically means is that these are really reliable. They're low growing, they're weather resistant. So these haven't sort of been processed, if you will, and made into the tulips that we all know and love. These are really easy to grow. They have a natural look. They remind me a little bit of crocus in a way because of that, that low height, but I think they're around the border. They're gonna be super duper nice. These are also already up in April. So April, May, June, that's super nice. Um, we need to plant them about the same, so nothing really changes. It's all around 10 centimeters that we're gonna plant these bulbs. They'll get around 30 centimeters high, so quite a difference compared to the 60 that we're getting with most of our tulips. Um, this will be our first year having these botanical tulips, Clusiana Charm, but those yellows, those whites, the yellows are really gonna complement some of the original tulips that I mentioned that we inherited with the property. The whites, I think, will look nice with that apricot and that mango color with the Avignon. So I'm excited for that. Some other really early flowering varieties, and this will be our first year having these. We're going with some hyacinths. We have some blues. I'm looking for maybe a red, maybe a pink, something. Again, because when we're sitting in here, when it's rainy and when it's cold, and we look out in the garden, I wanna see color. I don't wanna see anything that's too dark and it's just gonna blend in with the background. I want something that's gonna pop. So I found this one, it's called a sky planet. That sort of sky blue, really light purple. I think that's super nice. And it's blooming already in March. So March, April, May is what we're looking at, which would be great. So if we could have this March, April, May flower, the botanical tulips could come around April, and then by end of April, May, June, we're having the tulips, and then by June, we're having the rest. We're having like the dicentra come in, we're having uh, the GMs are coming up by then. So, so then I'm not quite so worried about having the flowers, but I think these hyacinths are gonna be really nice. It needs sunny, well-draining soil. Cool, 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 we can do that. 10 centimeters deep as well. I like that it's in March. So I think the sky planet is really gonna work. I've also found this one, a red glory. Oh, that's pretty. Again, March, April, May, September, October, November is that um, planting period. 25 centimeters, so yeah, not quite so high, so we'll definitely keep that in mind as, as we're sort of shaping everything out. But the red glory, another one that I found that I wanna show you is called Anna Marie. Whoa, look at that, that pink. So we've got the light blue, purple, that deep pink red, and then this pop of pink, I think it's gonna look quite nice. And again, in March, so that's super duper duper great. So this is what I'm thinking of. We've got the Tulip Avignon, the Apricot Beauty, Clusiana Charm, super excited for that, the Hyacinth Sky Planet, Red Glory, and Anna Marie. Now, while I got you here, let me tell you about one thing that we're not gonna have in our garden. And we actually dig them up every year when we see them, and it's snowdrops. Wow, they're everywhere. They just run rampant in this country. You see them in the forest. You do see them in a lot of people's gardens, and they really signal spring. They're, they're the first thing that comes up. Even through the snow, they pop up. So they're super duper sweet. We're just not big fans of them. Sorry, I hope I haven't offended anyone. I'm sure they look great in your space. We just don't prefer them in ours. Um, crocus as well. Uh, we do have some because, again, they're really early flowering. They look great. They pop up and they almost immediately, like these botanical tulips, by the way, as almost as soon as they pop up, they're going to start flowering. Um, same thing with the crocus. So it does give a sort of immediate color before anything else. But we see them everywhere. 
here in Denmark. You see them popping up out of the sidewalk. I mean, the, the cemetery, the church grounds where Lars work, they have them and they do a great job with them. They have a big enough space where they can plant them in, in rows or in a pattern or around something. So in that way, I think it makes a, yeah, a, a lot better pop. We tried them around our rosemary in a pot this year. They were they looked cute, but no. And so now we have them sort of spread out over the garden, quite natural, organic looking. And I think that'll be nice. But anyway, enough talking. It's time to place the orders. I'll do that. You won't have to sit with me for that. But thank you for sitting with me through the tulip order. Um, just saying some things out loud and sort of lining it all up. I think it's really going to work. I've texted Lars and he was fine with the choices. Ha ha. So now it'll just be a matter of ordering them, waiting patiently for them to arrive and then getting them in the ground. So thanks.